let's use this opportunity to remember how binary trees work by building binary hailstone trees. Now you might think a hailstone tree is already binary in structure. There are only two branches at most. And that's right. So we can use our binary tree class to represent it. The binary tree class was different than the tree because it was a special case in which we had access to a left and a right branch. And we represented empty branches using an empty value. The empty value was used every time there was a left or right branch that had nothing in it. And in this way, we could ensure that every binary tree had exactly two branches, left and right. So we need empty branches here when it's not possible to come up from below. And we need empty branches here whenever we've reached the length of the sequence that we're interested in. So our next exercise is just to rewrite hailstone tree in order to give us this structure made out of binary trees. So the structure of the function is going to be the same as for hailstone tree, except that in the binary version, hailstone bin, we want to build a binary tree. So a binary tree of length 3 would have 1 and then 2 and then 4, and of length 6 would have 1 and then 2 and then 4 and then 8 and then 16 with two different branches, 32 and 5. If the right branch is empty, we don't show it. Okay. The base case is that if the length is 1, then we can return a binary tree with just that element in it. Otherwise, we get above and below. We recursively call hailstone bin. But we're not going to build a list of branches. Instead, we'll just call this the left branch, simplifying that expression a little bit. The same condition applies about finding a right branch. So we want to store the result here by binding it to a name called right for the right branch. Now what if this isn't true? Well then, the right branch will just be the empty tree. We have to make sure that our recursive calls are to the function we're defining. And then finally, we can define a binary tree with n left and right as its three components in its constructor. Let's see if we've been successful. It should now be the case that if we compute a binary version of the hailstone tree, we get 4, 2, 1. For 6, we get the leaves 32 and 5. And for 12, we get a large tree where the leaves are things like 48 and 52. Hailstone 48 has a length of 12. Great. So here's another question. Let's list all the entries in the longest path in a binary tree for which all of the elements are less than some k. So if k is 5, then the longest path in this tree is just 1, 2, 4. But if k is 20, then we have a much longer path. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 5, 10, and 3. All of those elements are less than 20. And if k is 100, well, then there are many different paths that have length 8 and, well, then there are three different paths that all have length 8 and none of the elements are less than 100. I don't really care which one we return at that point. Okay, so how do we define this? Well, the longest path below some k for a tree t is going to have this recursive structure. Let's see if we can fill it in. If it's the case that t is empty, or it's the case that the entry of t is too big, meaning it's greater than or equal to k, then we've reached a base case where there is no path, and so we return an empty list. Otherwise, we want to consider two options as with tree recursion and tree processing often does. We'll compute the longest path below k in the left branch and in the right branch. And what do we do with these values? Well, we want to extend the longer one. So if it's the case that the len of left is greater than the len of right, then we want to put the entry 
on front of left. Otherwise, we'll take this entry and put it on the front of right. In this way, we're breaking ties by using the right branch. But we could specify it the other way. I'm not so concerned about which one we choose. We still want to find very long paths. So the hope is that if we build a big hailstone tree that has length 25, and then we ask for the longest path that contains only elements below 100, we'll get a long hailstone sequence like this one. Let's try it out. Our implementation gave us this long sequence. Is this really a hailstone sequence? Well, if we start at 50, we go to 25, which goes to 76, to 38, to 19, to 58, to 29, to 88, 44, 22, 11, 34, 17, 52, 26, 13, 40, 10, 5, 16, 18, 4, 2, 1 a length 25 hailstone sequence where every element is less than 100.